Inside this box is a 3D printer and it might just be the world's smallest resin 3D printer. This box is even a significantly larger than the sub boxes that are in it. Here we have a box for the power supply, a smaller kit box that says two, this is a kit assembly and the main components of the 3D printer come in this little plastic container. So here is our really tiny resin 3D printer that we're gonna be assembling today and fingers crossed this thing actually works. It's only a hundred bucks over on Crowd Supply, I think, crowdsupply.com or something. I'll have the links down below. I ordered this back in August and honestly wasn't sure if this was a real thing or if it was gonna fully ship out, but here it is. And it was a really nice surprise to see this show up here in the mail. I can see the metal build plate right here. It is super tiny. Crazy, crazy tiny. And this says kit B. Oh, I can tell what this is right off the bat. This is gonna be the vat. So it looks like it's a plastic, yeah, it looks like it's a molded plastic vat here. Very small, very, very teeny tiny here. A big piece of metal inside this little tube is our FEP sheet. And I'm gonna open up the main container here. By the way, the name of this is Light 3DP. Yeah, it's a kit assembly and supposedly it's not too difficult. We'll, we'll see how really that is. Here's a whole bunch of screws and bolts and things, a motor and rail, the rod that's gonna be used for this, a bag, the actual board, assuming the light display there, that the LCD that's gonna power the screen. Build plate, <laughs> look how tiny this is. Hold on, hold on. The Saturn build plate, and here is the light 3DP build plate. This is a good bit smaller than the, uh, the, the Saturn here. Here's the Mars build plate as well. Just so, you know, the, the typically the smaller size resin 3D printers are the Mars or the Photon. They all relatively have the same size build plate. And here is the 3DP light. And yeah, this thing is tiny or the light 3DP. I don't know if you can tell, but I am so excited to put this together. And normally I'm not a big fan of kit assemblies or printer assemblies and is one of the main reasons why I love resin 3D printers it's because you typically buy them, unbox them, plug them in, level it, and you can start 3D printing. Uh, a whole bunch of other plastic parts here. I was expecting these to be 3D printed and they're not. They're actual molded plastic pieces here. Some more components to this as well. Here is a metal piece of the frame and another bolt. So no instructions. I'm assuming on their website, there must be instructions. So I'm gonna grab my laptop and we'll get the assembly for this thing going. While we're going through this build montage, I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in any of my resin 3D printer profiles, you will find links to that within my Patreon. Thanks again to all my amazing Patreon supporters. All right, we got it all assembled. That took about 30 to 40 minutes maybe. I'm sure you could probably do it a lot faster than I did. There was a lot of really small areas to try and get into to get the bolts in. Overall, the instructions aren't that bad. I've probably seen worse instructions, but in some areas it wasn't entirely clear. Everything is now assembled. It's pretty amazing to see how everything's held together. There's nothing holding down the vat. It's just some magnets here in two different corners. I might end up installing some additional other magnets in the opposite co corners just to give it some better uh, sticking power there. And then the build plate is also magnetically attached here. So just snaps into place and then you can tighten it down. So let's see if we can get this thing leveled or figure out how we're going to level this and then get a print up and running on it. It finished! Oh man. Well, there's no easy way to grab this. You just gotta pull from the build plate. All right, let me loosen this and magnetically attaches. It didn't print the little cross pieces inside there or the little pieces that typically stick out there, but it printed. It just means I probably need to adjust my settings here and play around with this bit. Oh man, I'm really excited that this actually printed. So this doesn't come with a spatula or anything like that. So you're gonna need to look into that. <laughs> I don't even know how to get the print off here. It's so small of a build plate, it's hard to get at it. Holy cow, I think I need to adjust my 
initial exposure settings. Wow, there we go. Well, at least it's sticking to the build plate really well. And I'm gonna have to get this cleaned up, but it actually, I'm so impressed that it actually printed something and it looks better than I thought it was going to. And here is my first semi-long print and it looks so good. Oh my goodness. I can't believe how well this turned out on this little tiny resin 3D printer. So I've had the light 3DP up and running now for a few days and I've managed to only get two prints really printed on this thing. It does print relatively slow, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, it's kind of hard to judge exactly how long each time prints, but I will say the on-screen indicator before you run your print, it's gonna tell you the estimated time. As far as I've checked with at least two of the prints, it's been fairly accurate coming in. One of those being almost exactly an hour and the other being a little over two and a half hours long. One of the challenges that you're gonna run into with this is it's obviously a very limited build volume. So you can really only print like one thing at a time unless you're printing extremely, extremely small things. So I was able to print a miniature from Loot Studios and I was able to fit the entire miniature on there at its full default 32 millimeter scale on the bed and then I had to separately print the base on this. So it was two separate print jobs that I had to run on this machine to get this tiny miniature figure. And the results look impressive. It's not bad, better than I was honestly expecting from this little machine. I think it even looks better than the prints that I was getting off of the mono price uh, mini, I think is what it was called, uh, that I reviewed a few years ago that was like, hey, this is amazing. It's a really affordable, cheap resin 3D printer and it actually prints. The results on this look light years better than that machine. And I think that machine even costs more than this does currently. And then the file that I'm most impressed with is this miniature Joker bust by Doses 3D, which is probably the newest Patreon that I've been taking part of that I absolutely love his models on. Everything comes pre-supported. And this is his latest release for November. It's this Joker bust along with a number of other files. But I printed this here in each of the components, the hat, the bust itself, and then the base all printed individually uh, separately on this particular printer here. And I ended up using this Elgu mint green for the print. And again, the details look fantastic at 0 0.05 millimeter layer height. I'm honestly impressed that with the rod, that the really thin Z rod that's in place there, it's not wobbling or doing anything crazy like that. The print quality looks good. I am seeing some layer line issues on the and certain angles when you look at it. I'll try and get some close-ups of this where you can see the stepping. But outside of that, it looks great, especially for $99 in a kit 3D printer. By the way, this is all open source. I don't think I necessarily mentioned the price. It is $99. Uh, there are a few different add-ons and it is pretty basic when it comes to the machine itself. So I ended up buying the actual power adapter so that I didn't have to worry about figuring out what kind of adapter I would need to plug into that. So that's an extra cost, but it does come with the build plate, the VAT, the FEP sheets. It came with an extra FEP sheet, the assembly process. Again, I think only took me like 30 minutes to an hour to assemble it well, really wasn't that difficult. I did run into some issues when it came to actually getting the prints sliced and up and running on here. And let me explain how that all worked. So for me to slice a file, to have it ready to print on this tiny, tiny 3D printer, it's a little bit more complicated for me because I'm on a Mac and I don't have a PC in the household. Well, thankfully I did, but <laughs> Uh, if you're on a PC, it's much easier. They have a tool that they've developed that will allow you to take a zip file that you're able to get out of Cheetubox. So you're gonna slice your file in Cheetubox. Don't worry about all the profile settings. All you really care about is the actual build volume of the machine so that you're not putting your file outside of the build volume. It's gonna generate a zip file. You're gonna extract as a zip. You then take that zip file and run it through their conversion tool, which will take all of the individual PNG files and turn those into Windows bitmap files. Now for me on my Mac, the workflow process was a little bit more cumbersome and it, it all comes down to software issues on my end. I ended up downloading a few different types of software to try and convert the PNG files to bitmap. 
that didn't convert it to the proper formatting, which is why I was having print issues initially when I was trying to get the machine up and running. So if you end up getting this machine and you notice that the screen is actually working and you can go through all the menus, but when you actually print a file, nothing's showing up. It's because the conversion between the PNG and bitmap is not processing correctly. So I tried two different softwares. I tried the preview application built in natively to Mac, which converts PNG to bitmap. It all boils down to it not converting to the proper formatting that's needed for this printer to actually print those files. Thankfully, I had this super tiny PC that I managed to find that someone sent me years ago that I never ended up doing anything with. I ended up putting their conversion software on this machine and it's not a Mac, it's just I put the sticker on there because it looks like a mini Mac. But I was able to then properly convert those over, load it on the USB stick and then get my prints going. By the way, you are also gonna have to buy your own micro SD card or SD card reader if you're interested in getting this machine. It does not come with one. I was looking all through there, couldn't find anyone. And then it's also not gonna come with any of the extra supplies like a plastic scraper or a metal spatula there scraper to get your prints and clean up things when you're working with the printer and by the way these standard uh, plastic spatulas that come with most of the resin printers it perfectly fits inside this vat <laughs> like exactly fits inside there it's a it's a really beautiful thing another interesting thing about this printer is that everything's just held in place by magnets the build plate is just magnetically attached and it locks into place so when you actually go through the printing process it's going to ask you to level the build plate it does that after every single print you need to re-level because you have to take this out in order to get your print off and then put it back in place. Once you go through the process of actually defining what you wanna print and then defining the settings, that's right, during this actual print process, when you go to print the file, you define what the parameters are, what layer height, uh, what exposure settings, what bottom exposure settings you're gonna select. And it's only three settings that you have to define, which is kind of cool. And then it's gonna ask you to put the vat in and it's all again magnetically attached and then you pour your resin in and it's good to go. For the vat, there's only two magnets in each corner and I honestly think it does a pretty dang good job of holding it in place. I thought maybe I was gonna need to go out and buy some extra magnets and install those, but I really haven't seen any issues with this coming loose and it's pretty strong when it comes to the magnetic forces at play there. So I don't wanna call this a review of the light 3DP because it's not yet. I, I feel like I need to play around with this a good bit more, print with it a good bit more, but I did wanna call it like, who exactly is this for? And in my mind, it's really for anyone that's out there that is interested in tinkering with things in building their own machine from the ground up, that's interested in it being a completely open source product that you can then go and build things on top of. It doesn't come with an acrylic case or anything like that. So thankfully my print area here is pretty well shielded from direct sunlights because I do a lot of resin lapses. Oh, and the resin lapse cable won't work with this. The, the light source in the bottom, I don't think it's strong enough to trigger the actual camera trigger, which is unfortunate, but maybe I can figure out a way to work around that. But this machine, it, it prints decent and it prints well for the price point. However, if you're interested in resin 3D printing, I can't say go out of your way and buy this. You're gonna have a much better experience spending an extra 50 to $60 in buying the Voxel Lab Proxima or what Polaris or whatever the, whatever the lowest priced resin 3D printer on Amazon is over something like this currently. Just avoid that mono price mini thing. It's not a very good resin 3D printer. Also, I did wanna mention that the community behind this, there is two different Discord channels. There's a, a subreddit for this as well. Everyone that I've interacted with over there has been extremely super helpful with all of this and answering my questions. And there's other people that have been joining that have just received theirs and their questions have being answered. It's a very small community currently because I don't think there's a whole lot of these out in the wild just yet. But I found out about this back in August. I put my order in and just received it here at the end of October. And so I would expect, you know, around a two month 
lead time there, all depending on how many they have on hand that they're shipping out at any given time. But I do think it's really cool to have such a small, tiny resin 3D printer that actually prints proper things. I'm planning on attending the Rochester Maker Fair here later in the month in November, and I'm hoping to be able to bring this on hand with me there so that I can actually show off some resin 3D printing while I'm there in person and not have to worry about a huge resin 3D printer or even something like the Elgu Mars where if some resin spills, it can make a gigantic mess. This on the other hand, can barely hold any resin. The amount of resin that's held inside this vat, I easily waste more resin just taking my prints out and cleaning them off of the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous how little resin this thing actually uses. But if you're interested in more information about the light 3D printer, I will include links down below where you could find that. And if you're interested in purchasing it, that's where you'll be able to pick it up. Uh, again, I'll have links to their Discord as well so that if you have further questions, you can check that out and answer, you know, see whatever thing's going on there if you're into that sort of thing. I'll be continuing to print with this on and off. I'm not entirely sure what what I'm going to do with it. I have a few projects in mind. If you have some suggestions, let me know down in the comments because I want to see what I can potentially add on or build on for this unit. Or I have one other use case that I really want to test out and see if it will actually work and not make a gigantic mess or ruin something of mine. Hey, thanks again for watching you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye now.